Okay, Zoom, huh? Okay, Yashikoach, everybody, for joining, and we just look forward to hearing Rabbi Wolbowski this evening. Okay, thank you. And and if if anybody has like a noise in the background, if you could um, unmute yourself, but otherwise, uh, you could feel free to actually uh, keep your volume on if you want to add something. But as long as there's no you know disturbing noise in the background. Okay, so let's get right into it. So yes, from the parsha. Every week we focus on a different topic in halacha, a different area in halacha, in which um, an area of a Torah law that relates to the sedra of the week, that relates to the parsha of the week. The topic this week is going to be the sugya of pidin aben, the mitzvah of for a father to redeem his firstborn son, which is learned in this week's parsha. But in addition to being learned in this week's parsha. As we will see, it is learned elsewhere as well. So this uh, today's class is based on the teachings in Lekut HaSichas, volume 11. And let's get into it. Okay. So this week's parsha towards the end of the parsha, we learn the paragraph that uh, tells us the mitzvah of Pidyan Aben. Pasik says, First it speaks about a donkey, and then it speaks about a human being. Every human son should be redeemed. Now, the Torah also in Parshas Koirach, after the story of Koirach, when Koirach challenged the Kohuna, so there as well, the Torah tells us the mitzvah of Pidin Aben. And that is over here on the screen. Redeem, you shall redeem. Uh, uh, Adam, the firstborn of, a, of man. So we have two sources. Today's class, really, if you want to bring it down to the, to the core, is going to be to analyze the difference between these two sources. But before that, we have already a little bit of an analysis already, already done for us. And that is the fact that we find something very interesting in the Gemara. We know that there's two Gemaras. There's Talmud Bavli and Talmud Yerushalmi. There's a certain discussion that appears both in Yerushalmi and in Bavli, and they both come to the same conclusion, but they learn it from two separate places. What am I talking about? A situation where the father, who was supposed to obviously redeem his firstborn son, he neglected to do so, he didn't do it. The son grows up. So the Gemara asks, where do we know it from that now that the father didn't do it, that it's the son's requirement to do it? Where do we learn that from? And we'll see the Talmud Yerushalmi learns it from this week's parasha. Parasha's boy, the first source on our, on our screen. The Gemara Bavli, Talmud Bavli, learns it from the Pasuk and Parsha's Kairach. So let's see that. And that's going to be how we're going to get into the analysis between them. So the Gemara Yerushalmi says as follows. Mitzvah ha'av shechai v'lasis levnoi the mitzvahs that a father is obligated to do on behalf of his son, lemoilai, he has to give him a bris milah. Liftoisai, he has to redeem him. If he's a b'chor, if he's a firstborn. Lelam de taira, he has to teach him taira. Ulelam de umnus, he has to teach him a trait. Lehasiya isha, he has to get him married. Rabbi Kiva Oimer, Rabbi Kiva adds another one. Af lulam de lashat apne amayim, he also has to teach him how to swim. For his, uh, for his uh, protection. I mean, now, it, now the Gemara turns to the question that we are discussing. How do we know that if his father doesn't teach him, he's obligated to teach himself? How do we know that if his father doesn't teach him, uh, doesn't you know give him a bris or give him a, let's actually focus specifically on Pidyan Aben, his father doesn't redeem him, that he has to redeem himself? Talmud Laimar, we learn it from this week's Parsha, Parsha's boy, Adam Sifta. The Gemara is referring to the fact that there's an extra word in, seemingly in this week's Parsha. It says, V'choyl b'char Adam b'vanecha tifta. Every firstborn of man, you, of your children, you should redeem. The word Adam seemingly is extra because it would mean the same thing if it would say, V'choyl b'char b'vanecha tifta. Any, you know, in addition to animals, also your own children, you have to redeem. The word Adam is extra, 
the Gemara learns from there, it's teaching us that if the father doesn't do it, the child himself does it when he grows up. That is the Gemara Yerushalmi, this week's parsha. The Gemara in Kedushin has the very same discussion, and it says, Lifdaisai, it's a mitzvah on the father to redeem his son. Minalam, where do we learn that from? So the fact that the father has to redeem his son, we learn from this week's parsha, the Ksiv Kol Bukhar Tifta. The Heicha, the Loi Parke Avua. And in a case where the father did not redeem his firstborn son, Michayev Iu Lemifrike, he himself has to redeem himself. The Ksiv, as the Pasik says, Padai Sifta. Redeem, you shall redeem. So you see, um, the, the Gemara Talmud Bavli learns it from the extra word Padai Sifta, redeem, you shall redeem, which is in Parsha's Kairach. Not the one that's in this week's parsha, the extra word Adam, but rather from the two, the double language of Pade Sifta. So, why the difference? What is the difference? Why does the Gemara Yerushalmi learn from Parsha's Bai and the Gemara Bavli learn from Parsha's Kairach? Seemingly, they're learning the same thing. They're both learning that if a father doesn't do it, the son does it. Why do they each choose a different source to teach what they're teaching? Okay, that's our opening question. But let's let's before we go to the next step, I want let's do a little bit of an analysis ourselves. There is a, a difference that you could right away pick up on, even sort of superficially, in the difference between these two psukim. What is that? This week's parsha. When it's speaking about redeeming uh, the Bukhar, it says you should redeem your firstborn. It's speaking to the person, you should you have the mitzvah to do it. Whereas the passing in Pasha's Karach is not speaking to you to do it, it's sort of telling you it has to get done. Right? That's different. It says, Pade Sifta, he should be redeemed. Redeemed, he should be redeemed. That's not that's not talking as a chiyo to the person. Another difference. And this is a contextual difference. This week's parsha, the context of the mitzvah pidin aben of redeeming the firstborn child, is coming in the context of Yitzhak Mitzrayim, which is sort of obvious because Hashem took us out of Mitzrayim. Therefore, we are obligated to redeem our firstborn, which is what the Torah says, what the pasuk says in this week's parsha. But in, in parsha's Kairach, in the second quote, the second pasuk here. It is not coming in context of, you know, why should you do pit in a ban because Hashem redeemed you? No, it's coming in the context of matnes kuhuna, of the gifts that we're supposed to give a kayan, right? Supposed to give might truma, you're supposed to give all the gifts that the kayan gets, because that's what the Torah lists after the story of, of, um, of Kairach and his challenge against the kuhuna. So the Torah then tells us a whole list of things that we have to give to the kahanim. And amongst them is the, the Pidyan Haben. So again, there's, there are differences between these Pesukim that we could right away pick up on. It didn't answer our question yet of why the Talmud Yerushalmi chooses our Parsha as its source that a child has to redeem himself if the father didn't do it. And why the Talmud Bavli chooses the Pasuk in Parsha's Karach. But we do see a difference. And that is the one in Parshas Karach is not talking really about the mitzvah pidin aben per se. It's talking about the gifts for the kohen. Okay, let's move on. What are we going to move on? We're going to move on to something else, seemingly an entirely different category in pidin aben. And that is the end of tractate psachim. If there are any, if there's anybody on this uh, Zoom call that um, is uh, on up to date with Dafayaimi. So currently, Dafayaimi is in Meseches Psachim. And what we're going to be learning now is the very end, the Siyum of Meseches Psachim. The Siyum, the end of Meseches Psachim, is a story. Very interesting story. I mean, it's interesting in Halacha. Rabbi Simlai, Ikla Lepidin Aben. Rabbi Simlai, he went to a Pidin Aben. Ba'ominei, they asked him the following question. They asked him like this, and they asked it in a very interesting way. Pshita, it is obvious to us, that 
They come to Rabbi Simlai and they say, you know, we have a question. What's the question? During the Pidin Aben, there are two brachas that have to be said. Two brachas that have to be recited. Just like every mitzvah, you have to say, Asher Kedishanu B'Mitzvah Tzivanu Al Pidin Aben. So there's that um, a bracha. And then there's the second bracha, Shehechiyanu. Every mitzvah that comes, at, oh, you know, not, you know, on rare occasions and not, uh, you know, not common, so then we say the bracha shachiyanu. So they start off their question like this. They say, it's obvious that the person who says the bracha of al pidin aben is the father of the child, the one who's paying the money to the kayin. They continue their question and they say, baruch shachiyanu v'kiyemanu l'zman hazeh kayin mevarech o yavi aben mevarech. The second bracha of shachiyanu, who does that one? Is it the father? Who says the bracha shachiyanu, or is it the kayan who says the bracha shachiyanu? Now, if you if you feel like you have the answer, so they they in their question it wasn't just a regular question; it was a question with a lot of they want to clarify their dilemma. They said either we should say they continue. They say kayan mevarech. Maybe the kayan should be the one to say shachiyanu. Why? Dumati hana liyade. He's getting pleasure because he's getting money. The kayan gets five slayim. And you you know you say shachiyanu when you get pleasure, correct? So so that's the reason why you should uh, you should the kain should be the one to say shachiyanu. Or ay avi ben mivarech the father should be the one to say shachiyanu the ka'avid mitzvah because he's the one who's doing the mitzvah. So they asked this question to Rabbi Simlai by the pidyon aben, and he was as they say they stumped the rabbi. He didn't have the answer. But he uh, didn't just not have the answer. He went to the base of Medrash and he asked this question. He said, I was by a pidin event today. They asked me, who should say the brach of Shehechiyanu? I didn't know what to say. They told him, the father of the child says both brachas, both al pidin aben and Shehechiyanu. And then after this whole thing, the Gemara concludes the Masechas of Pesachim saying the Hilchasa, and I want you to know that the Halacha, the actual Halacha, the ruling is Avi Haben Bevarech Shtayim. The father of the child makes both brachas, al Pidin Haben and Shechiyan. So the Mepharshim on this Gemara asks a very interesting question. And it's, it's a double question. There's two parts of the question, but I think that there's a strong relation between them. The first half of the question is notice how they asked Rabbi Simloy this question in such a strange way. They didn't just ask who says Shechiyanu by Pidin Aben, the father or the Kayin. They started off their question by saying, it's obvious to us that the first bracha is recited by the father. The second bracha, eh, we don't know. Why did you have to give that whole introduction? What did that introduction help to the question? It's obvious to us that the first bracha the father says, okay, so if it's obvious to you, it's obvious to you. Don't ask that. Your question is, who says Shekhi Yonu by Pidin Aben? That's the question. That's it. You should have asked. The Tzlach, the Noy de Yehuda, he asks this question. He gives very interesting answers, but we're not going to get into his answers. But he asks this question. In addition, there's another question here, which relates very much to the first question, which is, notice how when Rabbi Simlai comes to the Vesim Medrash and he asks this question to them, how do they answer? Avi ha'amrulei, they told him, Avi ha'ben mevarech shtayim. The father of the child says both. Of course he says the first one. That was obvious. You should have just said, Avi ha'ben mevarech shachiyanu. If the first bracha was obvious, no one had any doubt, why are you making the into, and the halacha is that the father does both brachas. Okay, he does, the first one is not even a question. Why are we bringing it up? So it's really, you see, I think it, once we mention these questions, it, it like pops out on us. There's, there's like something, there's an agenda here, an agenda about that first bracha. Al pidin aben. In the question, they wanted it to be mentioned. In the answer, it also is mentioned that what? That the father does both. Of course, he does both. No, we want you to know that he does both Al Pidin Aben 
and Shekhyonu. What's this all about? One more, one last question before we go into answers. And it's also a question that the Mepharshim ask. But the answers that the Mepharshim give is, it leave us a little bit wondering as well. And that is, what's the connection between this story and Pidina Ben in general with the Mesechta of Psachim, with the tracted of Psachim? Psachim is talking about carbon Pesach. It's talking about the Yom Tiv of Pesach. Why is it is this halacha and this discussion at the end of Meseches Psachim seemingly it belongs in Meseches Bechayrus? It's more of a discussion about Bechayr, about Pidin Aben. And yet the Gemara brings this story specifically here. The Mepharshim asks this question, they give several answers. However, um, we're still really wondering from other angles as well. But the question is a question What's the relationship between Pidin Aben? And Meseches Psachim. Okay. I think I'm going to take it off the screen for now. Because we're going to get back to it soon. But for the, for the next uh, few minutes, I want to just sort of get, in order on, on our road to the answer, I want to spend a few minutes to, the, to speak about a point in Pidin Ben that's going to get to us, for us to understand and answer all the previous questions. So let's do a little bit of an analysis together. In Pidyon Aben, in the midst of Pidyon Aben, there are three players. Player meaning three characters, three components. You have the father, it's his mitzvah to be paid to his son. You have the son, and you have the kayan. Right? You, those are the three people you need to make a Pidyon Aben. So let's, let's try to get this, understand this. The kayan, what's his role? He doesn't have a mitzvah in Pidin Aben. It's not the Kayan's mitzvah, right? The Kayan, it's not, he's not doing the mitzvah. He's almost like the one who the mitzvah is being done with. It's not his mitzvah. It's like almost like a, a similar, I don't know if it's not 100% the same, but like a, like a ani, like a poor man. Is it his mitzvah to get tzedakah? It's his mitzvah. It's the mitzvah of the person giving tzedakah to give tzedakah. And he can't get stuck unless there is an ani, unless there's a poor person. But the poor person, it's not his mitzvah to get tzedakah, to receive tzedakah. Okay. So now, but let now, so we took care of the kayan. Let's speak about the father and the son. Here's where we have a question. Fundamental question in this whole mitzvah of Pidin Aben. Do we say that truthfully, it is the child's mitzvah? A child has to have himself redeemed. A firstborn has to have himself redeemed. The problem is he's a child. So who gets the mitzvah? The father takes his place. The father is doing it on behalf of the child. The father is doing it almost like bishlichus, as a shliach of the child. But essentially, whose mitzvah is it? It's the child's mitzvah. The firstborn's mitzvah. Or we could say that it's not that way. It is the father's mitzvah. The father's mitzvah to take, to redeem his firstborn son. If the father neglects to do it, if the father doesn't do the mitzvah, and the child grows up to be, uh, you know, a, a, a god he grows up to have a bar mitzvah, and without a pinna ben, so then it becomes his mitzvah. The, the son then sort of gets his own requirement, but not that, it's the son's mitzvah. It's the son's obligation to take to clear it up. But it's really essentially whose mitzvah is it? The father's mitzvah. Now, what, what's the difference? I really hinted to it a moment ago, but the difference is what happens when a father neglects to, um, to be paid to his son, to redeem his son, and the child grows up. Do we say when the child grows up, he's really just reclaiming his own mitzvah? He's now old enough to do the mitzvah that it was really always his. He just was too young to do it in the past. Now that he's old enough, it becomes his mitzvah. And he, not it becomes his mitzvah, sorry, wrong wording. He reclaims his mitzvah. It was always his mitzvah. He sort of grew all up enough to fill his own shoes. <laughs> you know, his shoes were too big for him at the time. His shoes of doing the mitzvah, Pidin Aben, were too large. Now he got bigger, so he's able to fill his own shoes. 
Or perhaps we say no. The mitzvah is the father's mitzvah. The fact that when the father neglects to do the mitzvah and the child grows up to be a, a gadol, he grows up to have a bar mitzvah, then it becomes the child's mitzvah. That's a new detail. It's a new limud. It's a new thing that is added at the age of 13 of this boy. It's not something that he always had. Okay, so you see that that two way, those two ways of seeing the mitzvah of Pidina Ben. Is it the child's mitzvah or the father's mitzvah? Now that we have that, we can now go back. So now I'm going to put back on the screen the psukim that we're discussing. We're going back to our original discussion. In this week's parsha, when it says v'chol b'chor adam v'necha tifta, and from the additional word adam, we learn that when the father doesn't do it, the child does it. What we're seeing is that the child and the father are receiving the mitzvah in the same pasuk, in the very same words, meaning that essentially it is the child's mitzvah. It's not that the child gets another mitzvah later. It's in the very same words where it says the father should do it. It also tells you he should do it. In other words, implying the only reason why the father should do it is because he can't do it on his own. So the Yerushalmi, the Gemara Yerushalmi looks at this week's Pasha and says, this is the source of where we learn that if the father doesn't do it, the child himself should do it. You know why? Because it always was the child's mitzvah, according to the Gemara Yerushalmi. Talmud Yerushalmi always was the child's mitzvah. The father was taking the place of the child. And when the child grows up, he's reclaiming his own mitzvah. However, the Talmud Bavli, Talmud Bavli says, no. Really, it was the father's mitzvah. It always was the father's mitzvah. And by the way, even after the child grows up, it's the, it's the father's mitzvah. But if the father is neglecting to do it, then the child does it. And this we learn, not even from Pidin Aben directly, we learn it from Matnas Kahuna. In other words, almost like, I'm going to say these words, but I don't, I want you to understand, I'm saying it just to clarify the point. Almost as if to say, the reason why the child has to do it when he grows older is because the Kaya needs his money. So you said it's, I, I, again, I use that as an example, not literally. But the point is, we're learning it as a detail in Matnas Kuhuna and the gifts that go to Akhayan. But Pidina Ben belongs to the father. It's a father's mitzvah. The child grows up and the child, father didn't do it. Ah, so we learn from a detail, a new limud in the laws of, of Matnas Kuhuna, of those gifts that have to go to the Akhayan, that if the father didn't do it, there's someone else who will do it. And that's the person himself, the child is himself. Now, so now that we understand where the Gemara Yerushalmi is coming from, where the Gemara Babli is coming from, they're coming from a fundamental different way, uh, lens of how to understand Pidin Aben, whose mitzvah is Pidin Aben. Now we could go back to the Gemara and the end of Meseches Psachim, the story of Reb Simlai. And now let us try to understand why when they asked him the question, they specifically added, they said, Shita, it is obvious to us that the first bracha, Sher Kedishanu B'Mitzvah Yitzivanu Al Pidin Aben, the father does. The second bracha of Shechiyanu, we're in doubt. We have a dilemma. Why do they make that introduction? Because they, it was a very smart question. Very calculated question. Their question was as follows. Shita, it is obvious to us that the mitzvah of Pidin Aben belongs to who? Belongs to the father. Hold that for a second. Meaning to say like this. If the mitzvah pidina ben would be a mitzvah on the child. And the father is only there as a placeholder. Then the person who should say shechiyanu is the kayan. Because the father is not his mitzvah. He's just doing it as a shliach. A shliach who does a mitzvah doesn't say shechiyanu. So the father shouldn't do, he's just a shliach of the child. He shouldn't say shechianu. Who's getting a pleasure out of this? Who's getting a kick out of this? Who's feeling the shechianu out of this? It's the kayan. He should say the bracha shechianu. However, come these students to Rabbi Simlai by the Pidin Aban, they say, being that we know that who says, it is the father. 
meaning to say, even after his child grows up, when the father does the mitzvah, he says, Asher Kiddushanu B'Mitzvah it is still the father's mitzvah. We know that the mitzvah of Pidyan Aben belongs to the father, and he's not doing it as a shlichus, as a placeholder for his son. Then, now there comes the question, who says Shechiyan? Because if the father would be a representative of his child, we know who says Shechiyan, or the Kayan says it. But now that we know the father himself is doing his mitzvah, so then maybe he should say Shechiyan. And that's why when they clarify their question, their dilemma, they say, should we should the Kayan do it because he's getting the pleasure, which would have been the answer if the father was doing it in the place of his son? So then the Kayan should get the bracha shachiyanu. Or no, maybe because Piddin Aben is not his child's mitzvah, it's the father's mitzvah. So then the father is sort of getting the real pleasure here. The pleasure of doing the mitzvah is his mitzvah. And therefore, the father should say Shechiyanu. And what did they answer? What, what was the answer when Rabbi Simoy asked? They answered, Amrulei avi haben mevarech shtayim. The father makes both brachas. Why do they say shtayim both? Even though that wasn't the question. The question was only about the second one, shachiyanu. Why do they answer both? Because by giving the answer both, they're also giving the reasoning. If he would have just said shachiyanu, you wouldn't understand why. They're saying shtayim because it is essentially his mitzvah. Because he says the first bracha, Asher and he says it always, even after his son grows up. Therefore, it is he who gets the second bracha, Shechiyanu, because it is a mitzvah that belongs to him. And then the Gemara concludes, the halacha is, it is the father's mitzvah. Because again, the Gemara Babli learns it not from this week's parsha, but from Parsha's Kairach, where it's the father's mitzvah, but just as a new addition to the a new limud, a new detail, which is added when the child grows up, that if the father is not doing it, the child should do it. And let me, I, I want to make sure I'm not losing. So I'm going I'm to get that all together, uh, bring it all together. And that is, because I still have another point I have to add. But before that, let's 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 make sure everything is clear. The Gemara Yerushalmi learns from this week's parsha that if the father doesn't do it, he does it. You know why? Because the Gemara Yerushalmi holds that really it is the child's mitzvah, and the father is in his place. And the pasuk in this week's parsha lends itself to be understood that way. However, the Gemara Bavli learns it from the pasuk in Parshas Kairach that if the father doesn't do it then the child does it. But the reason why they learn it from that Pasuk in Parshas Kairach is because the way they understand the mitzvah, the way the Babli understands the mitzvah of Pidina Ben is that it does belong to the father and it always will belong to the father. If the father is not doing it, the son is supposed to step in. But it is the father's mitzvah. From beginning to end, always the father's mitzvah. Based on that, perspective, they came to Rav Simlai and they asked, had the mitzvah Pidina ben been the sons and the father doing it for the son, we know who, who would say Shechianu. It would be the Kayin saying Shechianu in that case. However, now that we know that the, the mitzvah Shechianu ben mitzvah is said by the father at all times, even when the child grows up, so then whose mitzvah is it? It's essentially the father's mitzvah. It belongs to him. Then now our, we have a question. Who says Shechianu? Maybe he should get his Shechianu, the father. And the answer was, Avia ben Mavarishtayim, he does make both brachas. You know why? For the same reason why he makes the first, he makes the second. It is his mitzvah. He's not doing it as a shliach. Now we can understand why this teaching comes in Meseches Psachim. And as the theme of Meseches Psachim, because the theme of Meseches Psachim is obviously the carbon Pesach, but Pasach Hashem, Hashem redeemed us from Mitzrayim, as we learned in this week's parsha, and therefore we do the mitzvah Pidyon Ben. Wait, who redeemed who originally? 
the father, Hashem, Avinu Shabashamayim, our father is the one who redeemed his Bukhar. He redeemed Bani Bukhar Yisrael, us, the Jewish people. So by putting in a Mesechus Psachim, the Gemara is teaching us that every Pidina Ben is the same style as the original Pidina Ben. The original Pidina Ben was Hashem redeeming his child. Therefore, the father must redeem his child. It's not a mitzvah on the son, just like it wasn't sort of, I'm using interesting language here, just like it wasn't a mitzvah of the son of the Jewish people leaving Egypt. It was Hashem's ness. It was Hashem's miracle. It was Hashem's doing. As being that it was Hashem's doing, therefore the father throughout history has his obligation, who sort of, just like Hashem being the father of, of his firstborn, us, so too, the father in every generation, it's his obligation to redeem his first, 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 firstborn son. So the reason why it's being brought here in Mseches Psachim, and this halacha is being brought in Mseches Psachim, is teaching us, is to teach us the reason why we look at Pidin Aben in this way. Not that it's a child's mitzvah, but it's a father's mitzvah, because that's the way the original Pidin Aben took place. You know, every week we try to go into nefesh halacha to the neshama of the halacha. I feel like we already got into a little bit of neshama, but I uh, there is a very deep Hasidic idea that plays out in Rabbi Simloy's teaching. I won't be able to go into its complete depth, but I do want to address it a little bit. In general, Rabbi Simloy throughout Gemara is someone who focuses and highlights the importance of praising Hashem. He's also the one who in the davening says that you have to praise Hashem before you ask for bakashas. Very into praising Hashem, Hashem's praise. And Reb Simla is the one who's teaching us this. What is he teaching us? He's teaching us about the Pidina Ben that Hashem is here to, you know, that Hashem still has to do, which is to be paid to us, to redeem us from our exile, from our gullus. Right? It's a mitzvah of Hashem to be paid to us. Just like he did it originally, it's still a mitzvah for him now. And he's saying, obviously, the gula comes from Hashem, right? The redemption comes from Hashem. So the avi, the father, does it. The question is about Shechiyanu. I know this is going to get into a little bit of the deep Kabbalistic idea. That Shechiyanu, should the Kayan do it or should the father do it? Meaning, Kayan, in terms of Kabbalah, represents the level of kindness. But it represents within the realm of, of creation. And the question then is, is the way Hashem going to redeem us, is it going to be purely above nature or does it have to be, you know, wrapped up within the rules of nature? And Rav Simloy comes to the conclusion, Aviyah ben Mevarech Shtayim, that Hashem is the one and he's praising Hashem. He's saying Hashem is the one who's going to redeem us and he's also going to do it in his way. And what does it mean in his way? The way the Gemara says, He won't make us wait. He's going to take us out as the, the Rambam Paskins la halacha, that when you didn't deserve it, then it's miyad heinagol and it's immediate. Hashem doesn't make us wait. And the, then the Gemara concludes the hilchasa, the halacha is, the established ruling is, avi ben mevarich shtayim. And again, this is a praise of Hashem that what? That Hashem is going to redeem us. It's Hashem's mitzvah to redeem us from Galus. And he's going to do it in his way, meaning without the constraints of time, without the rules of time, but if within a moment, we, we should be able to be zaycha to this complete and ultimate geula. So um, that's a deeper study into the words of Rav Simlai. The simple understanding is that he speak, uh, not simple actually, nothing was simple, but I'm saying the point is on, on the halachic perspective, what Rav Simlai is discussing is whose mitzvah is it? And on a deeper level, Rav Simlai is talking about the geula of Hashem, redeeming his firstborn son, Bani Bechari Yisrael, his people, us, from this galus, and may it be very, very speedily in our days. May we be zaycha, may we merit to have a geula redemption, each one of us personally in our needs and collectively for Kal Yisrael. Thank Amen. you very much, everyone, for joining. And are we on next week with Yeshiva Week? Is there any difference in schedule? Uh, the only difference is that uh, because next Wednesday night, starts to Bishvat, okay? As a result, there may be another program 
uh, following a Zoom program after this one. So if we can try to finish just a few minutes earlier, uh, that would be helpful. I will, I will prepare that way. Okay. May I ask a question? Absolutely, for sure. Um, thank you. You said earlier that um, uh, one view is that the mitzvah is um, always the, um, on the child. And um, so um, if the father doesn't redeem, him, doesn't redeem the child, the child has to redeem himself. Correct. Okay. Um, but you also said, um, let me see if I can find it in my notes here. That, um, that if it was the father's mitzvah and the father doesn't do it, that the son still has to redeem himself. So if the son redeems himself because the father hasn't fulfilled the mitzvah, is it still the father that recites the bracha if the father is present? I mean, by, by the son redeeming himself, is it a question of giving the money to the Kohen? I yeah, mean, you know, I, I guess um, even if you say, I guess it would come down to who's giving the money. Okay. Right. Because so, I, I, I. No, I, I, actually, I'm sorry. Let me let me clarify my, my words because I didn't. That wasn't so thought out. Um, it, it was it not depends who gives the money. Depending on whose mitzvah it is, it's their obligation to give the money. Okay, but if the father didn't do it when the child was young and now the child has to redeem himself, if the child does so by giving the money, wouldn't it be the son who recites the bracha, even if the father is present, and even if one holds that it's still the father's mitzvah? No, if it's still the father's mitzvah, then the father gives the money and the father says the bracha. Um, and I hear what you're saying. I just want to clarify the situation. In other words, what that means is it's not about being present as much as the son has an obligation to do it, but why? Not because he has an obligation, but because the Koya never got his, his uh, gift. You understand okay. what I'm saying? Okay. The, the Koya never got his gift. So it's the, the son's obligation because his father never did it, that the Koya gets what he deserves. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Call two of everyone. Be well. Thank, Thank you, you so very much, much Rabbi Wolbowski. Thank you, Rabbi. Thank you.